All right, guys. This is a, a sovereign community call issue 17. Uh, my name is Ingalandia, and I'm going to kick off, kick off the call with an awesome freestyle rap. So kick back, relax, and uh, enjoy the intro. Just one second. All right, hopefully you can hear it. Sovereign the Awakening started on Monday. Interstellar protocol bridging to other chains, creating new pathways for users to come and stake. Staying sovereign harbors or positive sum game. You can earn SOV in the ETH BTC pair with crazy APY. So put liquidity there. Throw your hands in the air. If you're a bull, not a bear. Bitcoin layer two, the fiat lords are not prepared. Neither is Elon Musk or John McAfee. Does Peter Schiff have any gold he can fact? Whether you're an Ethereum or Bitcoin maxi on sovereign, you will save on gas fees. That's something that both sides can agree is rather sweet. It's time for the bitocracy to come and grab a seat because believe it or not, Bitcoin can do it all let's talk about it in this week's community call yeah i hope you guys heard me okay awesome like <laughs> always awesome thanks guys thank you for joining us here thank you for sharing in this mission uh the rules are if you're not speaking please mute yourself if you would like to speak please toggle the mute button back and forth to get our attention if that doesn't work feel free to probably jump into the conversation uh before we uh go through the agenda um starting with aurora would anyone here like to uh introduce themselves all right Let's kick it off with Ororo with uh, Governance and Development Report. Um, Yago is traveling at the moment, so we're going to have Ororo cover for him. Hey, everyone. I'm just going to smoothly combine both reports into one and not make two separate reports here. So let's first talk about what happened the last two weeks, or especially the last week, as the last week was a very active one. It was a week full of releases. On Monday, we started liquidity mining for SOV and the fiat on-ramp. On Tuesday, we launched the ETH bridge. On Wednesday, we launched the ETH pool. Today, we're going to launch liquidity mining for the pool. So a lot, a lot, a lot of things were going on. And I'm just now going to talk you through them one by one. So the biggest news for sure is our bridge launch. Um, due to our ETH bridge now being up, Liquidity and assets can freely stream to Sovereign and trade here with more security and with less fees. So you can transfer now your ETH from Ethereum and save while trading it. And soon we're also going to add stablecoins and then further down the road, all sorts of other currencies. Um, we are also planning to add a new bridge to on the bridge to Binance. So we are already prepared for this with aggregators. These aggregators are taking tokens from the Okay, thanks. So aggregators. Um, all of our tokens are now aggregated. Well, all the tokens which are coming with the bridge will be aggregated and ETH is aggregated. This is because we are planning to deploy the Binance chain soon as well, and we do not want to split up liquidity for one and the same asset. Um, so when you are transferring your funds over the bridge, your funds get automatically aggregated and um, you can put them into the pool and do not have to worry about anything else. If you want to withdraw to another chain, you can, and you possess an aggregated token, you can just withdraw to the chain of your liking. So, um, short again, now assets from ETH can travel to Sovereign and soon also from Binance chain, but the other direction is working as well. So SUV and other assets which are RSK native, like um, fish, will also be able to migrate to other chains. 
The second big news is the new liquidity mining program. We started the SOB pool liquidity mining on Monday, the 40k SOB in the first week. And today is the start of the liquidity mining program of the ETH pool with 35k SOB in the first week, which is also a very generous amount. And I think it's worth participating in the pool. A lot of people um, seem to see it the same way because we've got lots of liquidity in the ETH pool by now. So this is quite amazing. Um, thank you, guys. And yeah, so what's this the big news of this week? And we are going to have a lot of other releases coming shortly. One being margin trading for ETH. You might have realized that currently you can just swap, well, just you can add liquidity and you can swap, and margin trading is going to follow soon. We're going to have the Binance bridge up, as I said. We're going to add stable coins, aggregated stable coins with help from Babelfish, although this is not yet the finished Babelfish protocol, but it's a simplified aggregated um, smart contract, which can be upgraded later and incorporated into the Babelfish protocol. So we're going to have unified stable coins in the system. We are about to launch our referral system, which means that if you are referring sovereign to your friends, you can start earning SOV on each of the transfers they're doing and also um, earn some additional fees. Um, another thing a lot of you might be waiting for is the Origins platform and the Babelfish token sale. This is something which is also being prepared at the moment. On the governance side, we're having two SIPs coming up. Um, one is regarding the SOV token and if it should be added as collateral to the system. Adding SOV as collateral to the system would have the um, benefit that you could take a loan, for example, in Bitcoin, and put your SOV as collateral down or um, so long on SOV basically <laughs> by doing so. Um, and also the option to add SOV as a lending pool. This means that you could provide your SOV for gaining yield, just interest by others borrowing it. And it also means that people would be able to not just go SOV long, but also to go SOV short. Because just to remind you guys, if you want to go short on the system, what you're actually doing is you are borrowing the currency you are shorting and you are exchanging it for a different currency. So if you go short SOV against Bitcoin, for example, you would borrow SOV and exchange it for Bitcoin. And the other way around, you're borrowing Bitcoin and are exchanging it for SOV. So adding SOV as collateral type and as lending pool would enable both. And we here have to decide what we want to do. If we find it scary that SOV should be a available for margin trading already, or if we want to see how it goes, if you want to enable just one part of it or everything, I think here we have to decide as a, collector, as a community how we want to see this evolve. So this is a very interesting set where I'm very curious to see what you guys think about it. Another upcoming SIP, which is not as exciting, but also um, very important, is a SIP which is updating the staking contract. Now, updating the staking contract is not a thing I like to do because the staking contract is very critical. It is holding basically all vested in staked SOV, so a lot of money. Um, however, we were having issues, as some of you realized, that um, some of you who had a staking contract could not withdraw completely. And this is an issue which we had in the delegation logic, and it is now fixed. Um, the fix is in review. And as soon as we have the review done, we are going to have a sip around it to let you vote if we should include that fix or not. Um, 
So these are the two sips which are going to be coming very soon now. Um, oh, I just remember we had a third sip as well, and this is the sip about the budget. Sorry for almost forgetting about it. Um, we're having a ready draft for the budget sip, so this will also be up for discussion very soon. So, um, let's talk about then what is currently work in progress, apart from everything which I just listed, which is coming next. We are also still working on Arbitrum, and now we are making big progresses, so we have our own Arbitrum rollup running on RSK testnet now, and we are starting with the migration plans to make it as easy and smooth as possible for all of you guys to migrate with us to the rollup, saving even more on fees and being even faster. And the, like I said in previous sessions, the rollup is enabling us to do a lot of cool stuff, which would be difficult in layer one, such as conditional order types, what you are asking for. Um, with Arbitrum, we also want to launch SBTC, which is our Bitcoin pack, and we want to treat SBTC and RBTC basically equally on the system then. Before I close the development report, I just would like to introduce a new developer we're having, and that's Stan, who joined us on the um, development side, development side on the Solidity development side. Stan, do you quickly want to introduce yourself? Yes, sure. Uh, thanks, Roto. So, yes, uh, you know, all you wonderful people, I have recently joined Sovereign. Uh, this is my second week going on. It's been very interesting here. I uh, find the project very interesting. And I have been in the blockchain space for almost three and a half, four years, uh, mainly worked with the enterprise blockchains uh, before joining Sovereign and, and a few DeFi projects as well. So, yeah, I'm glad to be here and working with each one of you. Thanks, Dan. It's great to have Thanks. you here. Quick question before I move on to the to um, creative and design with Zoo. Uh, Aurora, you were talking about conditional orders. Is that the same thing as like limit orders on Arbitrum? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, limit order out of conditional order. The conditional orders are also like stop loss, take profit, like every order which is linked to a condition. Okay, awesome. Um, so, Zoo, would you like to step up and give some updates on creative design? Yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, so, uh, we've been very busy. Oh, hold up. Let me just. Um, yeah, we've been very busy um, creating all of the assets for social media, um, all of the images. We Our illustrators have been uh, flat out making all the crazy, crazy artwork that you guys seem to love. Um, on that, we've been uh, also sorting out some um, NFTs. Uh, we're, it looks like we've got some, uh, some very super special NFTs in the works being made at the moment. Uh, more, more will come out about that shortly. Um, we've been, uh, other to that, we've been finalizing the design and the development of uh, the Babelfish integra integration. Um, and that is actually going to change how you guys interact with the bridge. Um, so the bridge uh, won't feel like so much like a bridge anymore. It'll be more like you're just depositing the assets that you choose into um, into your portfolio. Um, we've also been working on the Origins Launchpad, and that's actually now in development. Um, all in prep for the Babelfish sale. Uh, the Origins platform will be heavily based around NFTs. So we're creating NFTs for all that. And um, all of the Origins users will be retroactively dropped an NFT uh, for participating in the Origins SOV sale. So uh, you should be look, look forward to that. that. That will come out shortly. We'll obviously announce that in the announcements when that when that's ready um so margin spot and swap are now live um we we're taking on your feedback and uh updating as much as we can there are certain things that we can't do uh we're waiting 
for the back end and then we can uh but yes please keep on um providing feedback on your experiences using those interfaces uh the liquidity page is now the new liquidity page is now live i hope you all are in agreement it's a huge um upgrade from what we had before hopefully now you can kind of understand a bit more what's going on. I know there's been a lot of issues with uh, confusion with the data and we are working on sorting that out and uh, making sure that all the data in the interface uh, makes sense to you and um, allows you to um, make decisions based on the, on, on, on the data rather than on blind faith. Um, we have been working on the lend new lend and borrow pages um they're going to be on testnet hopefully very soon so we'll ask you to come and test them and give your feedback uh the ledger the ledger flow allowing you to be able to see your balances that's actually been causing us quite a lot of issues but we think we found a solution for that so hopefully that would be coming out shortly um uh new portfolio page is almost finished uh in terms of uh how the logic of it is working so that will be in development very shortly um and i hope it helps you all have a better oversight of what what is going on um with your assets other to that um, the referral page is hopefully coming soon, um, so you can all start earning SOV uh, from sharing your links. Um, that's all from me. If anyone has any questions or anything. Uh, let's make sure we get through all the updates before we do questions at the end. Just, oh, yeah. I just want to okay. make sure. No worries, no worries. Yeah, sorry. Slider. Hello, hello. Um, yeah. So, um, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, someone, someone spoke. Uh, maybe, maybe we can just ask. Do you have a question? Like a quick yes. one? Yeah, quick one. Myself, Sam. I'm from Blockchain Whisper community. Oh, oh nice, nice to be here. Yeah. So, just wanted to know, like, I do uh, like this concept of liquidity pooling, right? Just want to understand, like, do we get uh, the reward in SOV or RBTC if we choose to go with Ethereum RBTC? Our rewards, all liquidity mining rewards are being paid out in SOV and are being paid out in vested SOV to be more precise. This means that they are vested for 10 months. And to be even more precise, what you are getting is a balance on the docked SOB contract. And the docked SOB contract is just a contract which is holding all of the SOB which everyone is earning until the person deems it ready to vest it. This is because vesting is a rather expensive operation, as wise. So it's not vesting each time you make um, like a small earning. So it's better to just um, accumulate it on the docked SOB contract and whenever you think now is the time to vest it, press the button and have it vested or it happens automatically if you're withdrawing from the pool. So it will be for 10 months vested? Yes, exactly. Okay, that means thing. that one-tenth of it unlocks each month. Each month, correct. And another question, like, see, I can invest one BDC or how much, or whatever I want, but I'm not able to calculate, like, how much will I earn or how do we calculate that? So that we should know, like, how much maximum money or BTC we can put in so that we can get the maximum profit. How do we calculate that? Uh -huh. yeah, that's a good question. It's, it's like one of the numbers we really wanted to have in place for the launch of the liquidity mining system, but we did not manage to have it in place for you yet. However, I think I saw on our channel as a calculator for the current expected yield. I think Exide, you sh shared that one? Can you tell them yes, what is correct? I did. It's just an Excel sheet that calculates. Um, and right now we're at uh, 15 mil in the pool, um, and, which is giving us 413% expected APY at the beginning of the pool with a 7% uh, yield 
right now. And I'll be posting those numbers basically as, as the pool goes forward regularly, but I don't have a calculator available for everybody. Okay. So according to you, like uh, we are earning 7.66% interest per month or per annum on the BDC or Ethereum we deposit for li liquidity pooling or mining. Is that right? Remember that this is a dynamic number that will always change based on uh, the amount going up in the pool, right? So mm -hmm. the more that's in the pool, that number will change. And these things are just estimates. And this liquidity mining event is just for these seven days. For that seven-day period, you would extrapolate an APY of, of, uh, of 400% at the beginning and 7% and, and yield. Right? But that number will be dynamic. Um, All right. Bro, um, will that, uh, so are the rewards being calculated and, and delivered uh, at what rate? I mean, is it daily or is it delivered at the end of the, at the end of the pool? Like 10 months. No, no, no. The question to Aurora is, at what point is the actual rewards distribution determined? Is that happening on a daily basis or at the end of this pool at seven days? Okay, seven days. Correct. I got you. I am asking Aurora this question so she can give you the answer, please. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so I'm trying to answer it this time. Um, so the rewards are being accumulated on a per block basis. This means that each block, the a certain SOV amount is being paid out. And if you would sum up all of the blocks being mined in seven weeks, it will equal 35k SOV for the East Pool. Um, so, but because you are earning on a per block basis, it's mm -hmm. like you are being paid, yeah, each block, so to say. So this means that also the percentage you get is not determined now, it's not determined at the end of the pool, but it's always depending on how many funds are currently in total in the pool, what is currently your liquidity in the pool, how much time you're in the pool. And it's just very exact because this time also we're having a smart contract based model, not a vacant based model. So this is making it all very smooth. And what is the block what? time, Aurora? Sorry? What is the block time when you say per block? Um, it means, ah, oh, you mean, ah, oh, yeah, now I, I got you. Yeah, every 30 seconds. So you theoretically you could withdraw every 30 seconds if you wanted, but it would not recommend it. Um, can I ask a question? So, uh, yeah. move on to slider. Sorry, I just is it so? It, essentially, is it just like uh, each block essentially could have a different APY on it? Yes. Which is why it is that everything is an estimate. Yeah, it's an extrapolation and expectation from this point in time. Yeah, and so if you can all start to grasp why it is that we can't give exact numbers. It's because the way that it's calculated dynamically based on this block time. Yeah. Cool. Let's move on to slider. Hey, can I please ask a question on the same? Wait, no, please, please, save right it, please save it for the end. Moving Thank, on Thank you very slider. much. Thank you. Okay. After, after all right, all I got it, reports, got it. we can come back to Q and A. Thank you. All righty. Um, go ahead, slider. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm, I'm just going to talk about a similar thing. Um, but uh, anyway, um, so at the moment, we have some extremely marketable offers, which we have just been talking about. Um, and we're taking every opportunity to shout about them, of course. We opened the 40k SOV liquidity mining offer on Monday, which is on the SOV BTC pool. Um, as Exal mentioned, we have a calculator that the rates are variable, but um, yesterday the API was around 400%. Um, and we, we are looking to bring you updates, um, you know, so that we can, we can all stay on top of it. Um, today, we launch a further offer on the ETH BTC pool. Um, there's over $1 million worth of SOV available in the first seven days on this pool. This is by far the biggest yield on ETH in DeFi today. Um, we did some quick maths on the yield and it will start uh, well in excess of a thousand percent APY. 
So, so if you haven't brought your ETH over the bridge, it is well worth doing now. Um, and I think it's fair to say that, um, you know, the, the earlier that you get into the pool, the fewer people there are in the pool and the more uh, returns you make and the, the more people that enter the pool, those returns will, will start to kind of decrease. But there's still it's still a very, very profitable um, uh, pool to go into. So I just do encourage you to take a look at that and um, and take a look Slider. at that. Um, the 413% number that I just gave, is the number for the pool at this point at this point okay cool um that's great so um that, that's all i wanted to say on that but just to give it a massive shout out like it's we're all very excited about it and um we we hope that you will also be very excited to take part um beyond these seven first seven days those um rewards won't stop we will just revise how much rewards that we'll be issuing. So we hope that you will want to continue to, to um, provide liquidity to those pools beyond this first week. So um, on to our ad campaign. So we, we are currently promoting these offers on Brave um, and also on Coinzilla and BitMedia ad networks. Um, the ad campaigns are going well. We're driving about one third of all traffic to our website. Um, we're optimizing the performance all the time and, and we're looking to expand the number of channels we advertise on. Um, for example, we're bidding on Bitcoin Talk ads for June to July. Um, we've had some good results from that community in the past, so I'm, I'm excited to see what we can do there. We're also looking to start outreach to selected Telegram communities. Um, and of course, as usual, I'll bring you details of our activity there once we have um, data to report. We have launched our Korean marketing efforts and we have a Telegram channel for that. And I've shared the link in our Korean Discord channel. Um, and we are beginning our Chinese campaign on Monday. And again, I will share any official channels here when I get those. Um, and as part of that program, we're looking forward to getting some good exposure on Jinsi Finance, which is the Chinese equivalent of Coindesk. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that. In other news, we are um, we're involved in the Bitcoin Miami conference. Um, as you're probably well aware, that's taking place next weekend. Um, Yago is expected to speak there, so but we're also looking to supersize our presence with a few other activities. Um, one of these things is the Cross Chain Miami Meetup. It's a side event. Uh, it's designed to um, educate the Bitcoin community about cross-chain technologies like side chains and atomic swaps and, and how those technologies are helping Bitcoin scale and expand um, beyond the, the store of value on, on layer one. Um, we've taken the Hero tier sponsorship um, and with that we get a booth and we get the longest speaker slot which is going to Ingolandia <clears throat> and I hope you'll consider wrapping part of it. Um, other things we're trying to make happen but I can't confirm right now are interviews on the ground at Bitcoin 2021 and possible participation in an additional side event um, that looks very cool um, that's auctioning NFTs and there's DJs and uh, I just wish I could be there but <laughs> we'll see what we can make happen um, and, and, and get the word out about Sovereign and that's everything from me. Thank you Slider. Yes. Uh, XL Surfer? Yeah, yeah so um, I have an uncharacteristically short report no. today. So anybody that's in the Discord Other, channel, this is what we think it is. But they can, can somebody mute that. Please mute yourself. Um, yep. Remember, if if you're unmuted and not talking, I will just mute you. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, those of you who are in Discord will notice uh, in the moderator. Um, um, sidebar where all the users are listed we now have the uh sov price ticker bot which uh has been done by um team member neo and that is showing the sat price and the dollar price and also reflecting the market cap so thanks a lot to neo for finally getting that out to us um it's what's unique about the uh the sov ticker bot is that it's the uh, the first infrastructure microservice infrastructure deploy on our new Kubernetes cluster. So um, this is where we'll be moving uh, a majority of our services for for optimizations and also 
uh, backup and scaling solutions. Great work being done by the uh, the Circle of Shadow with the new team lead, Max, uh, and everybody that's joined the team. Things are really pumping up that we're going to have good data services on the back end. Um, in addition to the SOV price ticker bot, we now have uh, in test for the Wiki team and the community managers, we have the SOV Sage. And what the SOV Sage does is allows us to return um, uh, search, uh, search queries from the wiki so that when uh, the community managers are in the channel and somebody asks a, a question, can very quickly provide a direct link to a wiki page or a subsection of the wiki uh, to very granularly answer people's questions. So it's a big step forward in us being able to do community service. Um, Sobrathon is now upcoming. We'll be doing the press release on Monday or Tuesday which will have the full list of, of uh, sponsors or partners, um, judges, and speakers. Uh, we've added a huge amount of really cool people to, uh, to the Sobrathon to be, to be judging. Um, and that'll be launching simultaneously with Bitcoin Miami on June 4th. On uh, the first three days, there will be uh, talks and panels uh, and presentations from our partners who are doing the bounties uh, live streamed on sovereignthon.sovereign.app. There will also then be a schedule embedded in, in the page, uh, as well as connections to the Discord channel and connections to Gitcoin. On the fourth, uh, all of the prize bounties will be going up. Uh, and it looks like right now we have a total of about 750000 Dollars in bounties and grants post hackathon, so that's really cool. Um, and as far as the NFT projects that that Sue has mentioned, we're also moving forward on the development of the NFT portal, where not only will we be able to mint all of the NFTs natively uh, on on RSK um, to do the airdrops for the earlier token uh, holders, and also for the the different tokens for the token launches going forward, but there will also be a platform for people to upload their own art and mint NFTs natively uh, on on um, on the Sovereign platform. Uh, we're working together with a uh, startup from Coin the Coincilium Group called Minty, uh, and the coder is a guy named Dave Appleton, who's also involved with EtherCards. Uh, and does all of the auctioning for the Ethereum Foundation for uh, the different events that they do. And so we're looking forward to roll that out really super soon. Um, and uh, that's it from my side. Thank you very much, XL Surfer. Um, so next up, we have John Light. Are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me all right? Yep. Great. So uh, I'll give a, a quick update about what's going on in, on the Bitocracy uh, corner of the community. Um, so since the last community call, there were uh, two SIPs that were approved by uh, Bitocracy stakers uh, and voters. Um, one was the uh, Money on Chain sip uh which which is basically uh approving um a a loot drop campaign uh for money on chain uh, assets uh the the moc governance token and uh as well as approving uh loot drop campaign for the doc uh, lending pool uh you can read that sip if you want to know more details about that and there was also a SIP approved for uh, the Babblefish project, uh, which was proposing to be the, uh, the first or at least one of the first uh, projects to launch using the upcoming Sovereign Origins platform, uh, which is a platform that's being developed uh, so projects can uh, launch directly to uh, the public uh, using the Sovereign protocol. Um, you can read more details about the 
what Babblefish proposed uh, in their SIP, if you're not already familiar with that. Um, changing gears a little bit, um, I recently uh, kind of put a 1.0 uh, version 1.0 designation on, on some of the photocracy related uh, documentation that I've been working on. Uh, there are there are two main pages in the wiki that are being used here. Uh, one is the about sovereign governance page and the other one is the staking voting and delegation page. Um, I, I, I think both of those are in a, a not necessarily a finalized state because uh, those aspects of the system will be evolving, but I don't anticipate any uh, major changes uh, to those pages anytime soon. So if you're looking for the most up-to-date information about the current state of sovereign governance and how the bitocracy system works, uh, definitely check out those pages in the wiki. Um, and finally, uh, as uh, Slider mentioned earlier, uh, there's going to be the, the cross-chain Miami meetup this isn't directly related to Bitocracy, uh, but uh, I am actually uh, the, the organizer of that meetup. Um, and so uh, just want to give a shout out about that meetup. Uh, thanks to Sovereign uh, for the sponsorship. And uh, also a thank you to everyone who RSVP'd. Uh, I would like to uh, just mention we are currently looking for a videographer or a live streamer, someone who can help film the meetup. Uh, so if you're going to be in Miami or you know uh, a videographer or live streamer who's going to be in Miami and is available on the evening of June 4th, uh, please hit me up here on Discord. Uh, my username is uh, at light and uh, be happy to talk about uh, trying to get uh, someone in, into the meetup to, to film. Uh, and those are uh, all of my updates for today. All right, thank you very much, Light. Um, so uh, I will talk a bit on business development. Um, I'm trying to get more partners involved in the upcoming Sovereign. Um, been having some great meetings lately and very exciting. Um, what we're in need of is more Solidity devs um, and also people who, who know Node.js. Um, please hit me up. If you know someone would like to participate in, um, in you know the biggest Bitcoin DeFi project around, um, so yeah, we're the, the faster we can onboard new devs, the the faster we can ship things, guys. So um, you know, there's an incentive for for anyone who who's a stakeholder uh, or you know a fan of the community to to um, to help with that. Um, so I wanted to shed some light on the origins platform um like for the rest of the year um will be uh i typically meet with um prospective projects who are interested in in having a sale um on sovereign origins and it's a growing process right um because this is entirely new each sale is different each project is different um what tends to happen is is there's an introductory pro process where you know the the uh, the project at hands you know wants to learn more about what what sovereign is and uh, how they could potentially propose a sale. So for the first couple projects, there is some handholding required from from our end on um, how to approach the community, how to um, how to allocate um, a portion of their token supply for for a sale. Um, and also which demographic they want to tap into. Um, what I would love to see is, um, you know, for you community members that have a project in mind, you're connected with one. Um, the best way to, um, you know, propose a sale would be to go to the forum, forum.sovereign.app. And anyone can go in there and say, Hey, I have a proposal for a sale. These are the, the tokenomics. Uh, this is how much we would like to sell. Um, these are the audiences we would love to, uh, you know, whitelist um, early users of the app, or um, or specifically SOV stakeholders or SOV liquidity providers. Uh, I know I know you guys have a lot of ideas on on how these sales should be conducted. 
So you don't necessarily have to wait for a proposal to come from an hour. Whoever's making that noise, please mute. Thank you. Um, so I'm I, I'm just saying that the these sales are um, something that we you know we want to decentralize the process of like proposing proposing these sales in the in the near future. And uh, if you have a project in mind or you, or you know a project that could be interested in in doing an origin sale, feel free to have them contact me. And the more the more proposals we get out there for sales, the more streamlined the the process will be, and the more examples you'll have to 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 model after. Um, but you know, I'm bringing this up to say that like anyone can propose an origin sale. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, you know coming from people who are very very close to the internal sovereign team. So that's my speech on the origin sale, um, and that's more or less it for me from the business development side. Um, I know that we had a couple of questions um, posed earlier, and I wanted to, to make sure we have time for that. Um, so those who have questions on anything mentioned on the call, feel free to jump in and, and voice them now. Hey guys, this is David. Uh, I have a question. So kind of uh, along the lines of like the Origins platform and the Sovereign, and then just kind of like the internal team, it, we've all kind of like discussed a little bit about it, but but how has that been like like pulling in dev resources? I mean, it sounds like everything's trying to grow, but like if, if we pull back that curtain, like has it just been a massively uphill battle and it's very tough to pull in devs or are we actually having a lot of success in that and like seeing that in the dev community where people are wanting to join this project? I'm just trying to gauge that like, because that sounds like it's it's kind of the biggest impediment right now. It's more an issue of there's not a lot of people available. It's not that there's not interest. It's just that everybody's working. Um, and the level of solution developer that we need is top drawer. And we don't have time to onboard people that know something about solidity or have had some experience with something related to solidity, but we need really top shelf people and everybody's working at the moment. And so what it's are like the, what are like, the, if we have like a potential, you know, solidity dev, it's like, I don't now even know that process, like the, the incentive and the reward for them to like, you know, come and work on, on sovereign. Is it just like a salary or is it, you know, tokens or like, like what is, Sorry, I think I got disconnected. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I got disconnected as well. I think everyone did. Yeah, yeah everyone. Issue. <laughs> Our server probably reset or something. Um, in any case, so I mean, we have we have good compensation. Uh, we also have uh, signing bonuses. Um, uh, so that's really not so much the issue. It's just that the majority of the candidates haven't met the standards that 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 we're looking for. Um, so we have tests that we do with potential developers, and um, unfortunately, the majority of them don't complete the test adequately. Hey, uh, Exile, um, can I make a suggestion? Sure, please. Well, I would just like to suggest over the years, I've known some people who work with um, pretty high level recruitment um, in the tech field. My, um, my brother started a publicly traded company that's done like really well, and so I have kind of a a nice grab bag of um, people to, to, to draw from who are, who are friendly. Um, so that seems kind of an interesting idea. But then also it, it occurred to me, I don't know if this is a little bit too like, um, I don't know, not our style, but what if we tried to offer an incentive for, um, for bringing on uh, really high level devs, you know, like we a reward. That. Okay. We have a okay. signing bonus. We have a signing bonus for both the dev and for the refer. And the refer. Okay, that's what I wanted to check. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So all you need to do is get in touch with Selena on Discord and shoot her over, uh, you know, potential candidates, and mention those candidates, and then and then she'll onboard you into the uh, into the referral bonus. Yeah. Right on. Cool. So uh, yeah, we can. It, I think if we 
if I've, I've shared that with a few people, I think they'd be excited to uh, to help us find some some candidates. I just need a little bit more like uh, bullet pointy um, what specific dev requirements we need. So we'll they're, connect with they're that in the job hour. descriptions that are on the wiki, open positions, and there's nice. validity devs there, and the requirements are are there, and then there's uh, testing basically. Okay, right on. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Another another note. It it's ideal for us if we have um, candidates who have like full time availability, right. um, and yeah, working with agencies is is not ideal. But like, you know, we can we can always make things work. You know, if there's great talent that wants to work with us long term. Yeah, we'll try and sidestep that structure and go right to the direct c connection. You know, so there's a lot of people out there that are really that are willing to work as mercenary contractors and part time, but it just doesn't work with the speed of development that we're mm -hmm. that we're at, and also team integrations. We have yeah. daily team calls, and you know people are spread out across time zones, and we found an optimization, and so you know there's those types of issues as well. You know, sometimes basically people aren't available for a full time commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, so uh, my name is Franklin. I am one of the team members. Uh, so I just want to clarify one thing that uh, we are more uh, looking towards the senior soldier devs, and we have a referral commission for that mainly. And it is, if I'm not wrong, uh, um, it's 10,000 USD for uh, just referring them. Uh, Serena, please correct me if I'm wrong. So. Uh, if you guys know someone who is very good at solidity, please do refer it to Selena. Um, then as Excel says, she will take care of it. Thanks. Yeah, yes, maybe we should... Frank uh, is one of the guys that, that is actually interviewing um, our our solidity devs. So, straight from the well, horse's mouth. Question, did right. any of the community, were you aware that there is that, that uh, amount um, of incentive for bringing in devs. We've we've made that aware in the past. I mean, um, yeah, I've been aware. I've I've heard you guys mention that many many times actually. Cool, cool. Yeah. So the the offer still stands. Maybe we can maybe we can do another tweet about it as a reminder. I'll retweet that. That sounds like a great promotion for the for the brand. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we've been doing this regularly, and it just hasn't crossed your radar but we we do yeah. it we we're also Gee, networked with up? many agencies things i nice. mean we really have our feelers out and as i said it's really <laughs> um, i can tell you from personal experience everybody that i know from years in this space is like yeah i would love to but sorry i'm busy i'm contracted it's really <laughs> i will put it up on the bounty channel again and just to clarify it is uh, like Franklin said, a ten thousand USD for senior solidity developers. I'll and that is invested SOV. That's not ten thousand dollars in USD. That's in SOV. Again, best invested on ten months. <clears throat> hey guys, uh, it's Whipper checking in. Um, before I start with my question, I just want to give a huge shout out to the SOV team. Um, the speed at which you guys are just shipping stuff is amazing and uh, props to you guys. We're so happy and like super stoked. Um, my first question is with regards to total value locked. Um, I've noticed that there was a shit ton of ETH that came in yesterday. Has that been added to the stats page to show how much, like I feel like there's well, like... We don't have stats for the ETH pool yet and Betsy is working on that and there will be chart and integration coming as soon as we can get it out. It, it should be okay. out. End of today, tomorrow. Um, it, it's sort of done on the back end. We're just deploying it. No, no worries at all. I'm uh, I'm actually very impressed with how much liquidity has moved over in just a day. I think it's super, super impressive. So um, great work on that. I did have a question to maybe one of the devs who worked on the ETH bridge. I did bring this up in Discord, but I was just wondering if someone might have a minute to chat about it. I, as a user, I know that ETH fees are very, very expensive, but I noticed that bridging from RSK back to Ethereum is crazy, crazy expensive. I think it's like 0.15 ETH, which again, I know that we are not in control of gas fees on Ethereum, but it just seems really, really high. And I was wondering if there was like a way to maybe batch fees so, or batch transactions on the way out. 
So basically, we've reduced the fee today. Uh, it was originally higher. We've reduced it. And we will be uh, um, uh, coding and deploying a, a price oracle for transaction fees as soon as we can. Okay, yes, so to be more precise, we launched with 0.15 ETH fees, which would be what we expect that we would need on the ETH side of the gas prices were at 300 gigaway, which is not really the case on ETH these days. Um, because you need to consider that we're having um, multi-seek transactions on the ETH side, so it's not just one transaction, but three transactions. And the actual code needs to be executed. So this is summing up. Now, by reducing it to 0 0.05, it means that we are expecting an average gas price of only 100 gigaway, which is, we have to monitor that if this is something which finances itself, because obviously we do not want to operate the bridge at a cost. So even if we have the gas oracles in, place I would expect to be paying around this amount. Um, what really helps, what really will help is if we are changing the signature exchange process to happen off-chain instead of on-chain to have this uh, different federators just exchanges their signatures and one federator collecting them and pushing them all to the chain at once. This would save transactions and um, the other option is like XRZ set to just batch transactions and send them over the bridge together. But sadly, all of this is just taking a lot of time. And it's not just development time, it's also the audit. Because these are very critical contracts, you cannot push anything out without it being audited. And auditors are crazy busy these days, so you have to basically tell them one, two months in advance if you want to have something audited, just so that they can get the time. So this is why all of these changes take time. So I think for now, we will have to live with the high fees before we can do something about that. Yeah, and that's totally cool. The fact that you guys are aware of it and you're changing it is good enough for me. Um, so thank you. That's great. Good stuff, guys. Any more questions, guys? I can't believe that's the only question that you have, Whipper. But we can ask anybody else if they have a question. Uh, Novax here wanting to ask for direction and clarity and feedback on sci-fi creative writing narrative stuff. Uh, need a little yep. bit more context in the, the question. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can uh, some, I can add some color. Like right, right now we do have a, a writer um, um, who drafted like, um, you know, a first episode of of like a, a comic book series and it's something that that's probably that's probably me just for context it, oh that so, is you yeah yeah i'm it's no vax here yeah cool no it's actually it's not me no definitely not you somebody that's been with okay you okay, okay sorry okay okay cool all right i drafted something too just fyi so i'm i'm just, yeah so go on sorry uh no since you're since you're the guy what what was your what was your question Oh well, I'm, I, it sounds like there's somebody else who's drafted uh, something, you know, way before I got involved as as well. So yeah, I was just kind of wondering about how uh, what the vision is for that and how we can, you know, develop that more. How I can, um, you know, how I can participate in that more. I think um, I think it's a really cool idea, and the few uh, handful of people that I've shared some of those ideas with are all uh, pretty excited about it. We have some artists who are developing amazing images um, from the uh, from the written text that, that we've done. So I would just say that I would continue working on and developing that stuff, and I would publish them uh, as NFTs, as a you know, as a series with with text and an image uh, on the platform as soon as we have that ready. And maybe get in contact with Sue because Sue is leading our creative efforts. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that you two guys are actually already in touch, Sue and Novax, correct? Right. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah, we've been we've been chatting a bit about it and I know that there's so much focus on the, you know, on the platform and everything right now. So some of this creative marketing stuff is um, you know, not the highest priority at this exact moment, but I just thought I would um, you know, come in and see what uh, what I can be working on and how I could be most helpful in that regard. 
Yeah, that's super cool. And I think even though we are currently so very, very busy with a lot of stuff, I think it is important. So that's very cool that you're taking the effort and creating material here. Oh, it's really fun. You know, that's the thing is like, that's how I, in my opinion, that's how the decentralized, um, at least the marketing and the art really needs to be is fun so that the creativity is there. Um, and also what I noticed is that the, the idea came to me by way of slider who said, maybe we could do some sort of, can we have you do some kind of creative writing about the bridge and the bear and the bear market and the bear that symbolizes the bear market. Um, and I realized as I set out to do that, that there's this whole, um, universe of backstory and context that doesn't exist yet that can exist but kind of needs to in order to do so appropriate I'll, I'll, I'll just let you know this exists yeah. we're completely building it we've been building it for the last like three or four months nice and it's it's coming nice. so actually when when Yago contacted me uh, in January to join the team the first thing that he asked me was do I know any comic book writers and I went out and found comic book writers, and we paired them together with, with uh, Sue's uh, uh, creative team. And we've been actually working on long-term, multiple episode narratives of the Sovereign Universe. It's going on, and not only do we intend to be putting that out um, in comic book form, but we intend on putting that out in, um, uh, in NFT form. And also to be using that for artwork on the store uh, for T-shirts and coffee cups and everything. All of that stuff is happening in the background uh, amongst all of the development of the platform that you guys see. And so uh, for you particularly, Novax, uh, and for the rest of the people, creative people in the community, aside from the narratives that we're creating inside with our artwork, um, what we're looking to do is buy the NFT platform and buy other publishing platforms to, to create the ability for people to just basically do this themselves without our oversight. Yeah. So that's where it is that we're, that, that we're moving is enabling users to create, uh, art and narratives around, around sovereign and then to monetize them essentially and use them for, for, uh, community uh marketing yeah right on that's yeah that's exactly the goal and the vision that i have with um babelfish art so I, I bought the babelfish art domain uh, a few weeks ago and started developing this idea of decentralized art collaboration um, and that's kind of where this um, idea of creative writing and comic book stuff came to me so after you guys had already um started in this direction uh it occurred to me i said wow we can really capitalize on the the um, the synergy of one one creative writer's vision of something paired with an artist's ability to bring that to life, and uh, crossing mediums and and in artist collaboration. And we're producing some incredible stuff already. I'm super excited about it. Um, but now I'm sort of seeing the, um, the 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 possibilities with that to be minted as NFTs and marketed as a collaborative work, and to take on the the storyline that the community sort of um, chooses. It's just like such a fan fiction kind of potential for for so many different options. I'm really excited about it. So that's cool that so that te you're technologically and and in terms of like uh, uh, not only the social aspects. Um, so basically, Sue has been planning for two months now, or maybe even longer, a uh, complete Pokemon-style gamification of the NFTs. And nice. the reason why we're going to be working together with Minty is because Dave Appleton is also involved with EtherCards. And EtherCards is like the master of NFT gamification in the space at the moment. So we're looking to pair all of these tools and contracts so auction systems, gamification um, uh, technology, and then also the narratives around them. We're trying to, we're getting to the point of building that platform natively on RSK so that basically you have the tools that you need to just go and, and do your thing, right? Without Nate, that's what I'm looking for. That's great. Any, any right on. Oversight. And um, so there's a lot of thought that's been going into this and we talk about it, you know, here and there on the community calls, but um, 
it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Is it what? A, is it what a fan? Uh, are we working? Are we produ- um, making progress with trying to build it on that chassis? Or are we kind of looking to do our own thing? Or is that not even? We don't really have an answer to that. So one of the core devs that came in that was involved with what a fan has come into the team. Uh, and his resources have gone elsewhere for more important things than the NFT project. Um, and I've moved on to other collaborators that I've mentioned here uh, today. Yeah. Nice. All right. So I'm going to close out the call just to respect people's time. Um, but everyone, feel free to hang. Uh, I'll hang out for a few more minutes. Um, but I will close this. Thank you all for joining here. Uh, your support makes all the hard work worthwhile. So who we are as a collective, carving out a trail for financial freedom, dismantling what people know and understand about money. So help us spread the word and create more sovereign individuals. Stay sovereign, everyone. Cheers.